in the upper left folks in the blue he is from dragon phoenix gaming it's dark and in the bottom right in the red the slayer of trigger and many others skillis by the way putting a a small pin at the very least in that in that Estrella Ratchet series. Estrella's plus one air for his Phoenix is done before his plus one ground. What a meme. Like, I, I love the man. And uh, an answer to someone's question from earlier, Estrella is not in Korea. He's in California, but uh, he's playing in this tournament because he can. And we'll see him maybe do EPT Korea as well, because it's actually pretty friendly for the uh, for the California time zone. It's actually, it's not bad for uh, it's not bad for yeah, for US East either. Uh, or for the, it's not even all that bad for the East Coast, but it d does tend to end at, you know, two, three in the morning, uh, two in the morning-ish in, um, uh, during the winter, three in the morning-ish towards the summer. And that's actually so cruel because the way it works out, I live in New Hampshire, okay? And New Hampshire in the summer, the sun starts to rise very early in the morning. Like you start to get pre-dawn light at like 3.30 a.m. And this is like right towards the right towards the solstice. And that is right around the time when EPT Korea tends to end in the summer, which is uh, pretty horrible because the birds start to chirp. Maybe maybe uh, you get pre-dawn light like closer to four, but the birds start to chirp at 3.30 in the morning. And that is um, that is some mental damage that you suffer from. <laughs> You're like, oh, no, I'm just never sleeping. The birds are already chirping. This is horrible. And it really is horrible. Uh, it, I had many sleepless nights this summer, but it was worth it because we got to cast some good StarCraft. So I, I guess you yeah, got something, but it was double plus ungood. Made me made me a sad boy. I my sleep <laughs> my sleep was tremendously injured this summer. But anyways, uh. Where are we gonna go here in this game? Uh, certainly, we're not gonna see a build a game nearly as as wonky as that Estrella and Ratata series we were taking a look at. It's, in fact, it's going to be a Stargate opener from Skillis. He's going to play pretty normal. And uh, probably he's not going to go Glaiveless Adepts into Disruptors into Double Stargate Phoenix. Although, you know what? Now that I think about it, that was the build that Patty Mac used roughly. I mean, it's a different different bones or, um, I don't know, di different skin, but same bones. Uh, that, that Estrella you, or that, that Patty Mac used to kill Scarlet in EPT, uh, in DreamHack, in a Atlanta, the online cup, or the online, uh, component of that, so, that was fun. And by the way, Estrella did 2-0 Ratata, with his Phoenix Disruptor type thing, just hitting some massive shots at the end of the day. But of course, this is game one in this series, and that means that while Dark is a mad lad, and <laughs> very much enjoys going and doing all sorts of zany things where he'll go and he'll go for weird link floods he's not going to do that in game one of a series as the oracle will fly in gets a couple workers and well three workers are not exactly the end all be all you want to go six eight ten uh first of all denying the overlord denying the scout into the main base is a pretty nice open here from skillis and on top of that that was only the first oracle getting that damage skillis is going to start to uh, put himself in a better position to Oracle's fly in. That, of course, does one tap drones. Or one tap drones. And so let's just see how much damage Skillis can get done. Of course, behind this, additional gateways, adding a Twilight. And oh, Skillis is going to try to kill the Queen. No, Queen has energy for any sort of transfuse. So, yeah, Queen is not economy, but it pretty much is. It is transfuse. It is injects. It is anti air. It is spread it's a lot of things and it's worth you know three drones or more if you depending on how you want to do the math which is great right that that means then that the uh that that is a pretty valuable pickup there coming in from skillis in the first game of the series but okay it looks like he's just gonna play hero style or the um the modern hero style off of this is now we're gonna see a forge go down but uh i don't know that this is gonna be Quite the modern style that I was talking about, as we have started to see as the oracles fly in, but queens are here in spores, and oracles are low enough at this point that it's not going to work out super well for him. Uh, we are at a point in the in in the meta where it seems like we're seeing a lot of Protoss players 
go double forge play very defensively off the off the uh, the oracle blank opening and just use that to go and get aggressive or just use that to kind of play as defensively as possible build themselves and do like a 2-2 timing and uh, let the let the zerg player attack into them but that is not what skillis is doing his blink is two-thirds of the way done three-quarters of the way done stalker's on the left side he's got a nice stasis trap to retreat to and well that's gonna have to be uh, he's actually not gonna be able to find his way back to that one so good recall coupling or a couple stalkers on the right side are gonna get knocked down and dark handles this one pretty damn well Stalkers are going to try to find them a corner as much as they can. Actually, maybe buy time for Blink to complete, but it's 15 seconds away. So Dark is going to kill four Stalkers. The initial move out from Skillis is a disaster. And this is even before Dark has his upgrades. This plus one is not done. Stalkers, though, have to retreat back to the, the Aegis of a shield battery. And they're going to be okay now as Oracle or Adepts, excuse me, find their way into the third base. So Skillis getting a little bit of damage. Not a ton, of course, but just, you know, drips and drabs here or there. Five drones, a queen. And he only has, in fairness, he only has lost about three uh, three stalkers in this game. Not the end of the world, but Dark, he's going to go aggressive off this. He's on 50 workers. This is, this is the Scarlet 50-50. And he's going to morph a ton of Banelings here as plus one complete. He's going to try to make something happen. And where are our stalkers? The stalkers in the middle line. There's a shield battery behind it. So that is a decent position for the stalkers to be in. But Dark's just now going to try to dive into the third base here. Stalkers again blocking where the Banelings are going to find themselves. Shield battery overcharge is popped. Workers are not dying just yet. But there, there is nowhere for them to run. Everything goes down. 22 workers at the deck. And the army of Skillist is, uh, I think it's going to go down pretty quickly here as well. But, you know, okay, Banelings, yeah, they're going to get the Zealots. And uh, Skillist, he's going to be able to retreat kind of, but... That's going to be a dead third base, maybe. No, oh, okay. The third base stays alive here. It's going to have to be maybe a second round of lings to come flooding in. Shield battery overcharge, though, is not going to get popped. And now Skillis loses his third base. So as possible as that was. Unfortunately, Skillis did not quite have his SimCity set up properly. Was not able to start pairing away at the Banelings quite quick enough. And now dark owns this map he's droning up behind this of course but he's on five hatch in fact he doesn't even have a lair this is just all on the ling bane so he's gonna worry his way into this position once again again no shield battery nothing to keep anything alive the uh the oracles have no energy so they can't do anything and dark's gonna get on top of this third base once again with plus one he probably should be able to knock it down but instead he's gonna target the pylon down so shield battery can't do all that much and dark is eventually gonna have to back up because there are archons here but He's going to find one on the backside, and well, now there's no way into the natural just yet. But Dark is running this game. So Skellis has one opportunity left to him. He's going to drop a pile on. That's going to get found out pretty much immediately. Uh, but Skillis has to go aggressive here. He's on two bases. He's down 20 workers. He's down also 20 army supply. But maybe, just maybe, his plus two is halfway done. I mean, you drop a couple Cronus into that one. That's going to be pretty nice. And uh, from there, you know, may maybe, just maybe, he's got a shot. But I, I don't really know. So Lings, they're going to find a third base once again. And Skillis has to go. Yeah. Uh, in fact, he's just going to tap out. He understands that the break will not happen. Dark has a 1-0 lead now in the series. On the upper right, in the blue, he's up a game. It's Dark. And uh, hoping that about 30 Banes don't kill his third base in this second game. Skillis. The question though is uh, what does Liquipedia have to say about this being uh this being one zero dark? Does, does Skillis have a shot at all? Surprisingly 10%. I oh okay, it's actually kinda cool. Skillis and Dark are only played once. And that is a uh, that is a one zero lead for Skillis and Sirius, so huh? Hmm. Huh? I don't know what the I don't know what the setup on that was. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm not saying that Hero Marines run. Uh, that Hero Marine losing to Beyond is like, wow, he's so bad. 
Uh, just more like it's 3 a.m. and he played EPT Europe as well. So losing out before he's in the money is not too surprising. The dark. Okay, Skillis did get, did get a scout on this. Dark is proxy hatching. And proxy hatching, of course, with the changes is a little bit more powerful. Creep spreads much faster now off the hatch. So it's, you're able to kind of get creep. Uh, you're able to get creep forward forward which means you can get spines, which you can means you can start to push creep off the edge a little bit more. It's a minor buff, but for someone like Dark, who loves to do this anyways, it that's all you need. You only need that. You only need a little bit of a reason to go in and go for that. So drones have actually been pulled onto the, or have been main or have been rallied onto the other side of the map. So two spines are going to get started here back defensively. Stalker gets chronoed out. And that's, uh, that is going to be the key to this defense, right? Stalkers and... Well, the forge and the cannons and everything like that. But three spines are already on the way. Lings are going to find their way through. Start to worry away at this pylon immediately. Well, not maybe not immediately. The Lings find their way into the main base first. Dark wants to see what exactly his opponent has, if anything. So actually knocking down the gas mine here is pretty important. Because what that then means is that a stalker count is going to be is severely diminished. Uh, Skillis is not going to be able to build, build quite as many as he would like. But the shield battery is going to go down first right that, that that's not going to be a thing there's another one in the wall but that's going to go down pretty quickly and because the creep spreads so quickly the first creep tumor can be right up against the face of things which means that as this creep starts to spread onto the other side of the wall suddenly the rewall is going to be impossible so what is that what exactly is going to be the target here for right now we are seeing a spine get pretty low but there are three spines and the stalkers they're getting knocked down it's going to be a target fire on the cyber core first which means no more stalkers uh and of course no more work day that's going to be denied now pylons are going to start to go down here one 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 spine gets fairly low but uh it's going to be able to go back queens are, is going to get some transfuse energy and that is going to be a pretty nice deal shield batteries and cannons are set up and well the, the natural is done so certainly there's a shield battery overcharge but we're seeing the fact that shield battery overcharge is not the end all be all anymore the spines are starting to knock that one down and of course the spine here uh well cannon beats the spine right now so there is that but we will foresee the gateway is gonna fall no more production for skillis whatsoever and again the rewall is intensely problematic the more and more lings getting ready and now bailings getting ready so the bailings they're not to kill these units i mean who cares it's to knock down the cannons it's to knock down the static defense this is really the name of the game and because we're seeing uh, the forge getting targeted pretty heavily here. There will be no more cannons on the reset. So Banelings, they run crashing in. They only get two cannons out of the three. But now Lings are going to be able to get on top of things. Good force field, but a couple Lings find their way into the main base. Where the damage is going to start in earnest. Again, notice Dark re really focusing on making sure that he can get... Uh, he can get the gas. But at this point, who cares about the gas? There's no production. It's all in a static defense right now. I mean, maybe you get the Stargate up, but I don't even know how much that is really going to matter. Lings and Banes to come rolling in, but Shield Battery Overcharge knocks the pile or keeps the pile on alive. And Dark does need a little bit more gas. He only has 69 on the field. That does, of course, mean that the gas he may want to build more Banes is going to take a little bit of time. But Shield Battery Overcharge is going to be done very, very soon. And now this pile on is going to come under some significant threat. It actually seems like Dark will lose one of the spines on Burrow, though. Runs back away. Cannon gets a good shot. Stalker falls, and that's really not what you're looking for. But Void Rays are now on the way, finally. And there's only one Queen. There's all, there's actually no support. So a couple of Void Rays may make the difference. Now, Bailey's the come crashing into the pylon, but the shield batteries keep it alive. It's not all stacked together. But of course, the shield batteries, they're out of energy. There's nothing to keep them alive anymore. So the pylons are starting to fall. Shield batteries starting to go down. And a Queen, well, uh, it's only one Queen. So the Void Ray is not really under threat, but the Void Rays don't kill Lings all that quickly whatsoever. So it's going to be an Oracle behind that. Lings find their way into the main base, where they will start to ravage things, just knocking down as many workers as possible. So Tarkin dying, and there we go. They're going to target the pylon down here as well. Nothing's going to heal it. So this Oracle will not ever pop out, or at least not for a while. And Dark has 2-0 to kill us. Proxy Hatches are pretty damn powerful. Game 2 goes the way of Dark, and this Dark Beyond in the semis.